much. All right, so this is Friday Briefing. There's no other way to shut down the week apart from tuning into KTN News. My name is Betsy Kialo, and like I mentioned, this is Edward Parsin and the Different Faces Band. We had Edward here. Moses, Shaban, and Teddy, and they are our guest anchors tonight, so they have crazy rhymes. Tonight, today, we're celebrating the anniversary of Bob Marley. Ah. Is this love, is this love, is this love, is this love that I'm feeling, perhaps? You know what? Let's let's do what first we need to do. The news first. So let's start with the highlights. This is Friday briefing, and of course, uh, this is uh, it's a great night tonight. Eh? So let's start with the highlights. I'm so I'm so ex excited. <laughs> I feel like dancing. All right, this is Friday briefing. Let's get this started. Attack on quarry workers in Mandara. Claims of yet another terror attack. Questions over the criteria in the latest police recruitment. Council of Governors now say the doctors will have to wait a little longer for the promised pay rise. Mzazi anapokuelezea the amount ya napata hivi sara ya napata na vile ana watoto na pia wengine ni singles unaona the ya suffering and the effect of the high cost of food on a child's nutrition. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Our signed language interpreter is William Siller. Now, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights is raising concern over the recently concluded police recruitment, insisting the process did not meet the required standards. KNCHR says this is according to the 2015 National Police Service Commission recruitment and appointment regulations. <laughs> It's a grueling exercise that is not only nearly breaking the backs of those participating, <laughs> but also receiving a lukewarm review from the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Although the body does admit that the exercise was more credible than a similar one conducted last year, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights insists that the gender balance still remains a huge problem in the recruitment exercise. Most of the centers had on average 25 to 30 recruits uh, being taken, but none of the centers actually took more than three women, and that is a major source of concern. In Tabaka Primary School in Mandera County, for instance, only one female was selected out of 28 people who qualified at that station. The Kericho Green Stadium had only two female participants selected compared to 24 male counterparts. The situation was similar in Turkana and Kirinyaga counties where the ratio of male to female selection was nearly 6 to 1 in each case. The situation perhaps precipitated by the fact that the recruitment exercise mainly focuses on physical prowess at the expense of other character traits, a method that some Kenyans say is rather rudimentary. Tunafaa kubadilisha mutindo wa kuchukua ama wakufanya recruitment. Sababu tumeenderea saidi, laki tunaona the way of recruiting. Ni hile hile tuliansa nae wakati wa mse Kenyata, aliansa kuangosa hii inti. Not only is the physical aspects of the process in question, some argue that academic qualifications during the recruitment ought to be upscaled. Currently, the law stipulates that one should possess a minimum mean grade of D plus and above in the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education to qualify for the exercise. And with the evolution of the modern-day criminal to include the rise of cybercrime, the commission is warming up to the idea of having a police service with the intellectual know-how of combating such crimes. These are just some of the things that I think uh, are the challenges that face uh, modern policing in our country and uh, even within this region. We need more intelligence-led policing and less of the men on the ground, the boots and all this 
a, if that was the approach, a, a whole number of Kenyans would be serving in the service. Not only the ones who have 32 teeth, the ones who are six feet tall, the ones who are muscular and all that. We could even have persons with disability who are absolutely good in collecting information, intelligence gathering. There is no reason why they shouldn't be in the police service. To me, I can say uh, police forces should be free. So long as you are a form four, I can say you are good to go because police force is a force. It deals with the force. There is no professionalism. There is nobody who can say that I am a professional in policing. No, no, no. It is a force whereby you just need a physique. The Commission's assessment of the exercise followed a monitoring process of the police recruitment involving 75 individuals spread out across 25 counties. Those successful will have to undergo a nine-month training exercise before being incorporated into the National Police Service. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. All right, and that leads us to a big question tonight, and we'd like to hear your thoughts on it. We're asking you tonight, should the recruitment of police officers demand a higher academic qualification than a D plus? That is our big question tonight. We'd like to hear what you have to say. Hashtag is Friday Briefing, of course. Or at Betty M. Kialo is my Twitter handle. I'd like to hear what you have to say. You can also text me. 22155 is the number. Should the recruitment of police officers demand a higher academic qualification than a D plus? Now to some unfortunate news, and two minors were killed and several others injured this morning when a quarry in Elwak sub-county in Mandara was attacked by unknown gunmen. Well, this attack came hours before another attack in neighboring Garissa County targeting an administration police post. Akisa Wandera has these details. The attack, which occurred at 2 a.m. Friday morning, is said to have caught a number of the minors unawares but many still managed to escape to the bushes. According to Regional Commander Ambassador Saleh Mahmoud, local security officers were unable to respond swiftly due to the remoteness of the area and lack of communication network. The entire area is currently cordoned off as police investigate the matter and pursue the perpetrators. The regional commander, however, says they largely suspect the Al-Shabaab militia. In neighboring Garissa, another attack targeting an administration police post in Amuma was foiled by security officials who had prior intelligence reports. Three improvised explosive devices and rounds of ammunition were recovered in the process. The police suffered no casualties, but suspect their opponents did suffer some casualties from bloodstains that were found at the scene of the incident. This is the third time a quarry has been attacked in Mandera in the past two years. Akisa Wandera, KTN News. Now, the Somalia government and its foreign backers have now signed a security pact which they presented as a roadmap towards building a functional national army capable of taking on the Al-Shabaab. The pact was signed in London during the one-day conference on Somalia that was also attended by President Uhuru Kenyatta. The ever-increasing threat of insecurity, mainly propagated by Al-Qaeda-linked group Al-Shabaab, remains the greatest threat to Somali stability. And at the just-concluded London Conference on Somalia, insecurity remained one of the main agendas. And it's here the Somali President Abdullahi Mohammed signed what might turn out to be a permanent solution to the perennial insecurity that has plagued the country. The signing of the pact also signals the beginning of a new dawn for Somali's own national force at a time Amisom contributing nations have hinted at a possible withdrawal from the country beginning next year. It is a move many believe will also come in handy for Kenya's own security troubles that is mainly propagated by militants who cross over from Somalia. But analysts warn it's not yet time to celebrate. And the main concern is that Somalia is yet to have a fully functional government and proper institutions that will render it independent from foreign interventions and the ever-present threat of inter-clan wars, one that fueled the civil war in the 90s. While attending the same conference in London, President Kenyatta had requested for an additional 4,000 troops to the forces currently on the ground in order to boost the presence of the forces that have been tasked with the job of liberating areas currently under the Al-Shabaab militants. 
Although MSM has made significant progress in degrading terrorist activities and stabilizing Somalia, there is still much to do before a planned Amisom drawdown and transition to Somali security forces. But for now, Somalis have remained hopeful more than ever before of a prosperous nation free of the militants that have been causing havoc in the country. The Al-Qaeda-linked Islamist militant group has lost much of the territory it once controlled in Somalia, including the capital Mogadishu. But its numerous deadly attacks remain one of the main obstacles to stability in the chaotic Horn of Africa country. Kenya, which is one of the African Union nations contributing forces to Somalia, have been doing most of the fighting against the Al-Shabaab insurgents. Yusuf Ibrahim, Friday Briefing. Now, doctors, clinical officers and nurses will have to wait a little longer for their unpaid allowances. The Council of Governors says county governments do not have extra allocations within their budgets in the current financial year. The Senate is required to approve the allocation that has already been provided for within the national government supplementary budget. However, the Senate is on recess until the 13th of June. The Council of Governors is now petitioning the Senate to reconvene urgently to approve this allocation. The strike is hereby called off. In mid-March, Kenyan doctors ended a 100-day strike over pay and working conditions after striking a return-to-work formula with the national government and county governments. Under the deal, counties were to receive an additional allocation of 1.5 billion shillings for the half year implementation through the national treasury. This was to caution counties during the transitional phase of implementation of the doctors' return-to-work formula. In a statement sent to newsrooms, the Council of Governors says though the allocation has already been provided for within the national government supplementary budget, the allocation has not reached the county government's accounts since the Senate must approve allocations for the counties to draw the funds. <laughs> Doctors, clinical officers and nurses in at least 20 counties are on go slow, demanding over three months unpaid allowances and salary arrears. Walisema kwamba walikuwa nangojea president uh, ato a directive Andike barua, akandika, akatoa, na bado sasa hatujapata mishahara. We see a lack of goodwill from uh, the county governments in the implementation of the return to work formula. Uh, a good example is the lack of payment of years and salaries which were accrued from uh, December last year. Speaking to KTN News on phone, Senate Speaker Ekwe Ethuro says the Senate Committee on Finance, Commerce and Budget, led by Bill Okero, is seized of the matter. However, the Senate is on a long break and will reconvene on June 13th. Between now and that June date, however, if petitioned, the Senate can reconvene for a special sitting to tackle an issue of national interest. The Council of Governors is now urging the Senate to consider the ghost law as an issue of national interest by reconvening urgently to approve the allocation. Apart from doctors, the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers says their members in counties have not been paid emergency call allowances. In Nyeri, the Kenya National Union of Nurses wants the government to employ more nurses and promote others. The Council of Governors says the National Treasury authorized the Ministry of Health to incur expense through the supplementary budget worth 1.6 billion shillings. The money was to be disbursed to counties to cater for the negotiated health workers and clinical officers allowances for the first phase of implementation with effect from 1st January 2017. But this supplementary allocation must be approved by the Senate through an amendment to the County Allocation Revenue Act of 2016. The funds cannot be disbursed to counties until the Senate meets to agree on their changes. Senate Speaker Ekwe Ethur expressed optimism that once the Senate reconvenes and members make their input, the National Assembly will approve the changes. Treasury has allocated 3.09 billion shillings to pay the allowances from January to June. Treasury has allocated 3.09 billion shillings to pay the allowances from January to June. Patrick Amimo, KTN News. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Willie Bet says flower prices will drop next week after the arrival of subsidized maize from Mexico. Bet said the imported grain will go directly to the millers. Here are the details. I'm happy to say 
the awaited maize which we have imported, which is supposed to stabilize our prices in the country, the first ship is what we are seeing today. The final result is that, and according to the forces of demand and supply, what we will then see from here is a situation where the prices will now have to come down because the supply will have been beefed up in the country. I would want to say we have worked, and as government, we have worked with the, with, with, with the, with the millers, say that this situation is handled in a manner that the net beneficiary of all this is the consumer. Experts warn that levels of stunting are likely to rise if measures are not put in place to address the high cost of food. Our reporter Agnes Spender spoke to some parents on the effect of the high cost of living on a child's nutritional needs. Anne Jerry has just arrived with her baby, a one and a half year old toddler. She puts down her flask of porridge that she has carried from home. This is where she and 20 other mothers leave their babies as they head to work. Most of them are flower farm workers who can ill afford the 30 shilling a day fee for their child's daycare. This is a local daycare, and as much as Pauline Mutua cares for the young ones all by herself, there are things she cannot do for the babies, like providing them with nutritious meals. And it's not that there's a big difference with the food brought by the parents. On the table, there are containers, one for every child, white rice with black tea, ugali with skumawiki, white porridge with just some sugar, and for the few luckier ones, some milk. This daycare is part of a kindergarten school. Some of the children here are provided with food by the school after their parents have paid a sort of a lunch fee. The menu appears to offer a better diet than the parents can afford. The parents have cited a high cost of living, which has led to the high food prices as a major factor in their food choices. Joan Maina is a flower farm worker in Isinia, Kajado County. She has come to pick up her baby. Trends like this have contributed to 26% malnutrition rate in Kenya. Three out of ten children are malnourished, leading to stunting. Urban centers have not been left out. The rate for malnutrition in terms of percentage may not be that high. You may even find uh, places like Nairobi with uh, like even less than 5%. But the truth is, the number of the absolute number of children who are malnourished within like Nairobi would be very high. Experts warn that stunting in children is the main cause of underdevelopment of children. If a mother is packing uh, one egg, packing some rice and some vegetable and possibly even a fruit. It may be enough for, for that day. Agnes Penda, KTN News. To some politics now and heeding to the IEBC Tribunal Court ruling, Kanu is expected to hold party primaries in Fafi constituency, Garissa County. The primaries will be held on Sunday, the 14th of May. The polls will be held between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. in Nanigi Ward, Bura Ward, Jaragila Ward, Fafi Ward and Dekaharia Ward. The chair of the National Elections Board, Edward Kivuvani, says that uh, the IEBC 2013 register will be used as a reference. Moving on, 64 Somalis and 7 Kenyans arrived at the JKIA today after being deported from the United States. That 71 were accompanied by U.S. security officials. 7.30 a.m. Kenyan time at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Kenyans Charles Kehanya, Bota Patrick Gidua Paul, Mose Eliud Nyachai, Jacqueline Bosibori, Ogari Vincent and Sid Silla 
were among 71 individuals, including 64 Somali nationals, who have been deported from the United States with a record of criminal charges. The Kenyans were required to first record statements with the Criminal Investigation Department. They came from uh, Alexandria. Uh, we received our seven Kenyans and uh, the 64 Somalis. Some were caught driving while drunk, uh, that is driving under the influence of alcohol. Uh, some were arrested uh, for the offense of assault. They declined to speak to the media. The Somali deportees, on the other hand, were escorted to their country via Juba Airlines. The way they have come, maybe they would have expected to come back having their things, having carried the, whatever they invested, but as you, as they come, they don't come with the, all the items they, maybe they invested there. They come with a few clothings, yeah, so they get annoyed. They don't like being questioned. In January this year, 95 Somalis and two Kenyans were deported from U.S. in unclear circumstances. Barely two months later, U.S. President Donald Trump issued a visa ban to six Middle East and African countries, among them Somalia. Many seeing it as an enforcement of his policy during campaigns that he will evict all illegal immigrants once in office. In Kenya, there is no charge. In that country, they were charged. But in Kenya, they have not committed any crime in our country. It is estimated that there are nearly 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States. A majority of prisoners are said to be immigrants from nations across the world. Cecilia Okesho, KT News. All right, so we want to take a break here on uh, Friday Briefing. But before then, first of all, let's have a reminder of our big question tonight. And uh, we're asking you tonight, should the recruitment of police officers demand a higher academic qualification than a D plus? And we're getting quite a number of uh, responses. Let me just sample one as we move along. Mativa, you say no. Bullets don't know grades. The training course content is the issue. Should promote better practices. Thank you very much for your comment. And uh, web designer, you say, yes, everybody outshines them, then turn to use their muscles using brain works miracles. Okay, fine. Thank you very much for your contribution. Keep them coming, and I'll continue to sample them here on the show, even as we continue to uh, take a look at other news that's uh, happening in the country. All right, so we'll take a break, and I'll have...